Your habits are most likely to be linked to the way you manage your finances. For instance, if you tend to overeat, chances are high that you spend too much money on fast food. Similarly, money habits determine how well or badly you manage your finances. Today's video is about how to avoid some common money habits that are keeping you poor. By the end of the video, you'll realize how these habits are making your hard-earned income swift so fast away from you. Now, let's begin. Habit number one, spending more than you earn. This is the first enemy that hurts your financial well-being when you go to the horizons beyond your means. Overspending will always hurt your budget. You're overspending when what you spent is much more than what you earned as your income at the end of the month, or the wage you got. Start to monitor your spending habits. Take a very critical look at your expenses and separate them into two categories, need-based and want-based. With this, you can cut your wants away from what you need. Start preparing your budgets to get your spending under adequate control. You should have only basic spending, and if you're forced to spend more than you earn through loans or credit card debt, you need to be consciously focused on your income. It's hard to save money if you're overspending, and spending more than what you earned is an easy way to accumulate debt. It's better to avoid debt if you can. That's why you'll avoid paying interest on what you owe. People are social beings. It might be very difficult to turn down invitations to parties or dinners. So sharing our financial goals with individuals who will relate to the situation is one method to prevent habitual overspending. However, if a friend's idea invariably involves spending and they make a disparage comment about your car or the other possessions or don't respect your budget, it might be time to find a more supportive group of friends. One should not splurge and overspend to impress others. Accept the fact that expenses should not be beyond your capacity. Habit number two, postponing financial decision for tomorrow that never comes. How many times have you promised yourself that you start an investment monthly, only for you to push it back because you didn't save money to establish your decision? Shifting financial decisions is worse than making bad ones. With time, money you earn returns and generates additional income for you. The earlier you start, the more you accumulate. The best time for investing is when you have the money. The longer you felt investment, the lower your financial corpus. Most of us learn pretty quickly that inaction is the best way to ensure an exponentially more difficult situation. Yet for some reason ourselves, some people don't put finance moves on the list because they believe it's not the right time. It's almost like every one of us is two people, the present self and the future self. It's very hard for us to take action on something that will be helpful for us years from now, especially when the present self wants a cappuccino. In other words, the further away the benefit is, the less likely likely we are to take action and more likely we are to postpone. In the back of our minds, there's often a voice telling us, you're not where you want to be yet. Once you get there, you can make a decision. But the idea that we need to wait until we've saved a ton of money before we start to analyze our savings goals is not a good idea. Accept the situation and embrace it to focus on the future. A lot of people save, or at least try to save. Unfortunately, most of us can't do this regularly. This is common if you tend to spend first and save what remains. Prioritizing your expenses before your savings makes saving an iffy affair. This will ensure that savings become a habit rather than spending. You might think that not taking risks is good. It makes you wary of bad investments. However, if risk aversion is preventing you from investing in slightly risky but essential investments, then it's nothing but a bad habit. Do you think equity investing is bad because of volatility and risk? You might want to give it a second thought. Risk aversion Version is natural, but it shouldn't hold you back. Not taking a risk is not the same as understanding risk. Most expert investors understand risk rather than avoid it. If you hope to beat inflation and grow well, taking some risks is necessary. Again, what matters is the risk profile of your investment goals rather than your file. You can invest in safer options like Bank FD, but expect lower than inflation returns. So ask yourself, what is the risk profile of your goals? If you constantly keep making late payments against your credit card bills or utility bills, you are simply increasing your expenses. In the case of credit cards, late payments could potentially drive you broke, thanks to the hefty interest rates charged. Always pay your bills on time to avoid late payment charges. Whenever possible, set up auto debits to your bill to ensure you don't miss out on paying them. 
Millionaires spend most of their lives sacrificing temporary pleasures for long-term success. They have no problem buying an older used car, living in a modest neighborhood, and wearing inexpensive clothes. They don't care about keeping up with the Joneses. Habit number three, failure to budget. If you've abandoned a new diet just days after starting because the only thing you could eat were carrot sticks, you understand the futility of an overly restrictive and unrealistic plan. Similarly, many budgets leave no wiggle room, making them impossible to follow for any length of time. If you're starting with zero savings and no budget at all, it's not realistic to expect yourself to completely overhaul your spending and eliminate any impulse purchases or unexpected expenses in a month. One of the main pitfalls for people who abandon budgets is going from having no budget at all to trying to cut spending dramatically and setting impossible goals. If you set yourself up for failure, that's precisely what you're going to get. Find the budgeting method that works best for you and your family. At the very least, you should track your spending each month. If you find that you're already spending most of what you earn on living expenses and other needs, saving 50% of your income isn't attainable. Instead, pick targets within your reach. For example, cut back from eating out three times a week to only twice. Instead of going out to the movies, take advantage of your public library's free resources and check out DVDs instead. You can always change your budget in the future as your spending habits and saving needs change. If you don't understand the reasons your budgets keep failing, you're never going to find the one that works for you. Knowing what your current system or those you've abandoned in the past has tripped you up can help you figure out what can help you succeed in the future. Pay attention to the feelings you have when you think about your budget. Are you ignoring it because you hate spreadsheets? Ditch the spreadsheets in favor of something less Byzantine, like a service such as Money Patrol or Pocketsmith that automates budgeting for you. If technology isn't your thing, try the envelope budgeting system. If you think budgeting is boring and you lose interest quickly, brainstorm ways to make it more fun. For example, turn it into a game. Think of staying on a track like the thrill of maintaining a winning streak in your favorite sport. If you're not sure which method's best, try a few before settling on one or deciding budgeting doesn't work for you. If you don't know what you splurge most on or what types of situations make you throw caution to the wind, you can't choose a budget that fits your style. For example, if you almost always stick to your grocery list but can't stroll past a clothing store without ducking in to just look and then strutting out $50 poorer, your grocery budget probably isn't your most significant problem area. Knowing both your triggers and strengths can help you find a no-fail strategy that works for you. Pay attention to your spending style. Do you find it easy to say no to buying stuff for yourself but love to spoil your kids? Or perhaps you're an emotional shopper who turns to retail therapy after a hard day. I'm much more likely to shell out cash on impulse purchases when I'm clothes shopping without a clear plan of what I need to buy. I'm very susceptible to the lure of good deals and limited time only sales. So I never walk into a clothing store without a specific list of the things I'm going to buy there. If it's not on the list, even if it's a good deal, I don't allow myself to buy it. If you know your spending style, you can identify your challenge areas and use some strategies to help keep your budget under control. Consider using a free budget template, like these printable options from the Savvy Couple, to stay on top of your spending and address trouble spots early. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to our channel, like the video, and watch this as well.